Over the past couple of days, I've been thinking about some of the best casting that we have ever seen in comic book film history. There has been so many people cast as so many characters who bring their own variations and iterations to the character, and some who do really, really good, some who are okay, and some not so good. I made a top 10 list of characters who I thought were perfectly casted. They're not in particular order, I didn't really rank them, I just threw down 10 people who I thought played their respective characters really, really well. We all know J.K. Simmons played J. Jonah Jameson to absolute perfection, and still does today. He's awesome. Not to mention his role as voice acting for Omni-Man is perfect as well. However, I'm not gonna use characters like that, I'm gonna do more so heroes or villains characters, people who are somewhat main characters, if you will. I'm also going to keep it to live action purposes. I'm not going to go into animation or voice work for this video. So a lot of these people, they don't just look the part. They also sound the part. They of course have to act the part. They're part within their respective films, their shows, whatever it might be. They play the role very well according to the story that has been been given to them. Those are kind of the parameters I'm looking at these characters for. So the first actor and character I'm going to be mentioning on this list here is Josh Brolin as Thanos. The demeanor of Josh Brolin, the voice he brings to the character, the way he upholds himself is just perfect for someone like Thanos. A character who of course was really big in the Marvel comic community, but maybe was not all that well known outside of comic books or was always looked at as a dark side ripoff, he really made a name for this character. I think Josh Brolin was not only just the perfect fit, but he gave us the perfect reason to fear Thanos. The next character and actor is Ben Affleck as Batman. When he was first cast as the character, there was a lot of online discourse as there always is today. Whenever somebody is casted as a new comic book role, you're always going to have people who yap away, complain, cry, and shit on these people, essentially. All Ben Affleck did was prove everybody wrong for people who did not feel good about him taking the role. Once again, it's what I said. He looks the part, sounds the part, acts the part, and when he's on screen as Batman, he is goddamn Batman. When you look online, you can see all of these connections that people have taken from certain scenes, say, of Batman vs. Superman and Zack Snyder's Justice League, where he really looks like the animated Bruce Wayne Batman, or even comic book panels from certain issues across history. Appearance-wise, there is absolutely no doubt he is probably the most accurate Batman we've ever seen. Keep in mind, just because I have all these people on a list does not mean they are my favorite characters or iterations of the characters. However, Ben Affleck suits the character so well, and the redemption arc he has to go through with Batman perfect. I love it. There's even a Batman comic book that has been circulating lately, and it's not for the best of reasons. People are saying that it is AI art. Now, within that comic book, the Batman there drawing looks a lot like Ben Affleck. And what I will say is AI or not, clearly the people who made that comic book, they really love the idea of Ben Affleck's Batman. And I think that screams volumes, the idea that so many people appreciate the casting choice of that character, that they're using him in different iterations of Batman. I could go on all day with Ben Affleck's iteration, but the build, the look, the suit, the training, montage he does, everything about him is super cool. Next up, I went with Michael Shannon as General Zod. This is probably a character in a casting that you might think to yourself, you don't really need all that much range. You just need someone who's going to be dominating in appearance, someone who's going to get angry from time to time, and someone who might 
also appear as cocky or arrogant. Not in a jokey, sarcastic way, but in a rude or fearful way. He's also an actor who has portrayed a character so perfectly from my view that when I think of General Zod or even read him in a comic book, I hear Michael Shannon's voice. Even though in a lot of comic books they draw General Zod to be a little different from Michael Shannon, I still just see Michael Shannon. I I think he captured that calm yet commanding and almost tyrannical nature that General Zod is supposed to bring to the table. And even when you watch Man of Steel, especially nearing the last act of the movie, seeing the type of stuff he would do to ensure his domination over Earth, Michael Shannon did what he had to do and more so. For the next two here, I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. First, we're going to start off with Professor X, which is shared by Patrick Stewart and James McAvoy. At the end of the day, if 10 million people voted, who do you prefer, Patrick or James? I'm pretty sure 80% of the votes would go towards Patrick Stewart. However, I think both of them not only perfectly captured Professor X, but I think comparing to one another, they're very good matchups and changes for the character. I know the X-Men universe is crazy complicated, the timeline is messy, and really does not make that much sense. However, for what they were originally trying to go, I think James McAvoy was a perfect younger version of Patrick Stewart. Both actors were capable of portraying that both of these characters have their own internal conflicts. But at the end of the day, the school he has, the students he houses, the people he has promise to help and protect, that takes center priority. Even though James McAvoy in Days of Future Past had this slope where he didn't care about that, he eventually came back to his senses and did what he does best, being Professor X. It's going to be very hard for the MCU to look at James McAvoy and Patrick Stewart and say we've had both young and old versions of this character, both of them damn near perfect. Who are we going to get as a new Professor X. Now, the goal is not to beat the old actors. It's not to beat the previous people who had the role, but it's to bring your own vibe to the table while also capturing the essence of the character. It's not going to be easy. And speaking of not being easy, this is the second one I've cheated on a little bit, which holds a connection to one another, Magneto, which was played by Ian McKellen, and Michael Fassbender. Ian McKellen holds that rich development, the completely nurtured version of Magneto. Once again, like a lot of these characters that I've been listing need to have, that very dominating presence. Ian McKellen's Magneto is 100% someone I would follow into battle, or I would accept as my leader even if I did not fully agree with his methods or the ideas that he's preaching. As for Michael Fassbender, I almost don't know if there is a more perfect option for that character and actor. You know, in all fairness, those prequel X-Men movies, the first class Days of Future Past, super good outings for those actors, Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix was not so good. But the one thing that stood up, Michael Fassbender held out through all films. He felt like Magneto, he acted like Magneto, he looked like Magneto. And if there's one thing I could enjoy even about those films that were not good in my opinion, I could always know that I was going into it with the ability to enjoy what he was bringing to the table as Magneto. This is another character the MCU is going to have a very hard time replacing. I would even be okay with it if somehow James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender came back to reprise their roles. The chances of that happening are one in a billion. I don't think they have any interest in continuing. Magneto being my number one, number two favorite Marvel character of all time, I could not be happier with how both actors have portrayed this character. Next, I have Willem Dafoe. <coughs> Next, I have Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin. How can you make some sort of list about the greatest 
greatest actors cast as roles and not have Willem Dafoe on here. Green Goblin was already a fantastic character prior to that first Spider-Man movie, but Willem Dafoe has completely changed the meaning of Green Goblin, who he is, what he is, how he fights Spider-Man. What he's brought to the table for the character is the long-lasting memory, this universal remembrance that no matter how far into the future we go, we will always remember Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin. And even if you're not good with names, you're not huge into movies, but the least you know is Spider-Man in his past, you'll always remember, oh yeah, that one guy as Green Goblin. His lines are memorable, his voice as Green Goblin is memorable, every scene he has had is memorable. Just like every single person on this list so far, perfect. Up next, I'm going with Henry Cavill as Superman. This has a lot of baggage to it, a lot of disappointment, a lot of just negative emotions for me because being such a huge fan of his interpretation and never seeing him actually be able to explore all avenues of the character, it really does piss me off, I'm not gonna lie, and it probably always will. That will be something that will always sit with me. Nobody likes it when things very special to them get taken away. It's very understandable. However, the moments that Henry Cavill did get to showcase his specialities as being the Man of Steel, I loved every single moment of it. Yeah, that's right. Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, Zack Snyder's Justice League. I love his entire arc. Birth, death, and resurrection. Wish we could have saw more of it. Henry Cavill is one of these people that almost feels as if he was born in a comic book, ripped from the pages, and thrown in to real life. Henry Cavill is Superman personified. In the past, there were specific images of Superman that would come to mind immediately when Superman was mentioned, or when I simply saw the suit, or whatever it might be. And those three interpretations of Superman was Christopher Reeve, the animated Superman by Paul Dini, and Kingdom Come Superman, or if you want Alex Ross Superman. Today, it's become Henry Cavill. I think of those other versions of him as well, because they're all great in their own specific ways. All characters who have multiple iterations of themselves, everybody is going to have that one actor who portrays them perfectly. Take, for example, Catwoman. You got Zoe Kravitz. You got Michelle Pfeiffer. You have Anne Hathaway. Which one is it for you particularly? And that's what it is for me with Superman. Henry Cavill is my Superman. That is the perfect imagery of who Superman actually is in real life. And let's play a little experiment here. This is how strongly I feel about this. If you took every single person who has played Superman or even somehow looks like Superman, you line them up and you said to me, pick the one man here who is Superman. I'm pointing at Henry Cavill. We were eventually going to get to this point because how do you not get here? We have Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. This is the only man to ever play Wolverine in live action film history. That's crazy. He has been playing this role for 24 years. Some people may say, oh, well, Hugh Jackman's a little too tall. Wolverine is like five foot one. To my responses, in all honesty, who cares? Not everything from comic books should be stripped from the pages and put onto film, and not everything from comic books can be stripped from pages and put onto film. Not everything works like that, and I don't think that is necessarily something that needs to be upheld. He's done so good as the character that Hugh Jackman and Wolverine have almost become intertwined as one person. You know how Wolverine's real name is Logan? Logan or James Howlett, when I hear Hugh Jackman, I think that is the real name of Wolverine. Hugh Jackman deserves such a standing ovation that what Marvel should do is in one of their issues, they should change history where you actually find out, hey bub, I've been lying. My real name's not James Howlett. 
It's Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman deserves that. He deserves this honor. Sure, there's been some banging X-Men movies and there's been some stinker X-Men movies. Throughout his portrayals of Wolverine in all of these movies, he always does a killer job. He always makes me feel like that is the epitome of Wolverine. For this next one, which has really just become a staple, and it's completely understandable, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. You could arguably say there's no better casting in comic history. In all fairness, I don't read Marvel comics, but from the very slight things I've seen of Tony Stark in comics, and for how people explain Tony to be in literature, it does seem as if Robert Downey Jr is literally the comic book character. There's almost no difference at all. What's even more outstanding about his portrayal is the fact that he was capable of doing this in a universe that stood the test. It was capable of leading a future in which Marvel would create their own cinematic universe for years to come. He also became the face of of Marvel. He became the face of the Avengers. He sacrificed his life in Endgame. He's done so many historically monumental things in those movies. I think it's fair to say he would probably be number one on so many people's charts. Even though Iron Man is not my favorite character, I can't deny how good Robert Downey Jr. is and how important he is for the comic book world and honestly, the film world. And I think it is fair to say that nobody could have done what he did. But then for the last person on this list, and that is not necessarily saying they are the best of the best, in my opinion, they actually might be. However, that is Heath Ledger as the Joker. Rest in peace to the best live action Joker we've ever had, and honestly, I think might ever have. There's so much Heath Ledger did for the Joker in all mediums of DC Comics for games, movies, shows, animation, you name it. But what I think it did even more so is it really showed the world that, hey, comic book films, they really can be taken seriously. Now, I'm not saying comic book films were not taken seriously beforehand, but a lot of other comic book movies in the past didn't really do well before this point. I mean, even look at it, in everyday life. It was hard to be a fan of this stuff back then because you were labeled as a nerd or a geek or a loser. I think when Heath Ledger came in and played this role, not only was he terrifying as the character, but he also upheld the Joker standard. It also tuned people in. They said, oh my god, a superhero movie that has this good of acting, directing, producing, writing, production, everything about it, it's that good. Oh my god, the first superhero movie ever to crack a billion and well-deserved, by the way. There's a reason why Heath Ledger didn't only just win an Oscar for that movie, but why so many people still talk about him in that role today. Heath Ledger ramped it up. Just because these characters wear capes, symbols on their chest, or a clown with makeup on, does not mean you can't rightfully fear these characters, or you can't enjoy or take these characters seriously. He really flipped Joker and the comic book acting world on its head. Even listen to some of the stuff that Christian Bale has said about his performance. When he acted alongside Heath Ledger, he almost felt stupid. He almost felt like, I'm not doing Batman justice. I need to ramp it up. And I will always love and appreciate Heath Ledger for that. So there it is, 10 actors and their respective characters characters that I think are some of the best casting choices of all time. And really quickly, let me just give you some honorable mentions. James Marsden as Cyclops, and a lot of you might be surprised by that one. I do believe he deserved a better script. I do believe he deserved more appearances, more screen time. He could have done a lot of good for that character. We also have Christian Bale as Batman. This is my bias coming in here. I've always loved 
loved Bale as Batman. I understand his whole voice portrayal. Not everybody likes it. I do. Also, he is my Batman. He's the one I grew up with. He's the one that's part of my favorite movie franchise of all time. He is the Batman in my favorite movie of all time, so I had to put him there. Then we have Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. I think that one is extremely self-explanatory. I'm sure there are other people who could play Deadpool, but as of right now, Ryan Reynolds is probably the best you can get. I also have Christopher Reeve as Superman, and whereas I do prefer Henry Cavill, Christopher Reeve could not have been more perfect for the time at which they made those movies. And then we have Alfred Molina as Dr. Octopus. He played the character so well, and looks so damn close to his comic counterpart. He's another sleeper pick that I don't know how easy it would be for the MCU to cast another version of him. So now guys, leave in the comments below some of your favorite comic book castings of all time. There are of course other characters I did not mention. It's really hard to keep track of so many of them, but these are the ones that immediately come to my mind. That is all I have for you on this one, everyone. So I hope you all enjoyed the video and until next time, I'll talk to you all very soon.